Hey people, welcome to another one of Chris's beer review skis. Um, I will be revealing the Fuller's London Porter in a can. Apparently this is supposed to be dark, rich, and complex as anyone would expect a porter to be. It is a 5.4% ABV at 500 milliliters per can. Uh, this is an imported beer product of England and for those who are not familiar with Fuller's Chiswick Brewery uh, sorry it's the Griffin Brewery Fuller's Chiswick it is a very well-known beer across the world it is one of those beers that tend to get picked up really quick at, uh, at, at the LCBO around the corner um, I haven't really ever drank in uh, the London Porter before so this is going to be a new thing for me um, not that I've ever really done this before, but I'll be using a Carlsberg freaking coaster. I'll be using a freshly rinsed Pilsner glass. Uh, I find that with porters, it doesn't really matter what kind of glass you choose. They always taste the same. Uh, I, I'm sure I'm wrong about that, but it's just something that I pick up on the porters. Um, smells like an English ale, uh, even though it's a porter. Uh, on the back here, it also says to make sure that you do not drink while you were pregnant. So, uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm pregnant, but uh, when that day comes, you know, I, uh, I'm i probably not going to be drinking beer, so. Uh, all right. Now, I poured this straight out of the can. And it doesn't look very healthy. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's starting to look. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The head's starting to come up now. I think the reason why it, uh, it reacted that way is because I literally pulled this off uh, uh, off of my balcony, and it's starting to get very, very cold out there because the winter's starting to uh, come around the corner. So maybe it's about time that I uh, take some of that beer off of the balcony out there. Uh, very, very cold. Uh, the can was was difficult to hold on its own, and now. Now the glass is starting to get a little cold here. Uh, we got a one finger head with a uh, freezing cold temperature pour. Oh yeah, that smells a lot better now. Picking up on a little bit of a coffee note there. Um, it's an off-white color, black all the way through. Um, sometimes I'm able to pick up on uh, like a brownish tint uh, somewhere along the glass, and this is the region I'm getting it at. Not that that's such a big deal, but it kind of gives you a little bit of an explanation as to uh, basically how, uh, what the degree of darkness this beer has. I, I almost feel like the only reason why the top is dark is because there's a head on the top, because now I don't see any. All right, lighting's weird. All right, people, let's uh, just dip into this, and uh, I'll let you know how it is. It's going to be good. Oh yeah, -hoo -hoo -hoo. that's good. You literally do have the smoothness of a Guinness, without the widget inside. Of course, uh, every Guinness can has a widget because that is supposed to help provide the perfect pour. Um, very, very, very uh, coffee taste. Definitely a uh, uh, English ale back burner taste on the back of your palate. very very smooth um, now when I'm saying that this is smooth you get a little bit of a, a carbonated taste at the very tip of your tongue and then the rest of it is just all smooth very very uh, complex beer here very good um, no complaints whatsoever you can already tell I'm starting to develop some form of lace here I don't even want to say some form of. Look at that lace. It's all lace. Um, that looks beautiful. Beautiful beer. Probably the best beer I've ever had out of out of a can. Um, from from a porter perspective. Um, now, of course, we all know that I'm comparing this to the smoothness of a Guinness, which is actually in reality a stout. Um, it doesn't really matter at this point. If you, it's funny. 
This is a 5.4% ABV brew. I'm correct. And if you have had, well, I hate to put the bear aside here, but uh, if you have had Fuller's Past Masters Double Stout, um, it has quite the alcoholic punch for an 8% ABV brew. Um, for some reason, the back of my palate, I'm able to pick up on on something from this beer that in that beer, it, it, I, I well, in that one, it's much more of an, uh, an a boozy taste, when in reality, this one is only 5.4%, so it can't be a boozy taste, but for some reason, they have some form of a commonality. For people who like high alcohol content brews, I recommend that you try the Double Stout. If you like your lower, lower, uh, alcohol content brews, uh, I recommend that you try Fuller's Porter uh, to start with. So this will kind of lead you up to that um, if you can still find them. I think from now on every year I'm going to be looking out for Fuller's brews around the holiday season because that seems to be when we get the big shipment. Um, sure we get the odds and ends uh, of their beers uh, every every very once in a while um, throughout the year, but only in this holiday season did we receive such a vast amount of Fuller's brews. Look, we got we got Fuller's Winter Ale, we got Fuller's Double Stout, Fuller's India Pale Ale, Fuller's Strong Ale. Jeez, I know there's more. I know there's more. I've I've drank them. I can't see them right now. They must be in my in my box beside the the desk here, but. We got some crazy Fuller's beers going on this year. I, first day, first day I went to the store, picked up one of each. Next day I went there, sold out. That just gives you an example of what you're dealing with here. Ah, very good. Very good. Very good. Sorry, sometimes I work on my Japanese every once in a while, you know what I mean? Uh, now, uh, I can't really say this about porters, but if this was a stout, when stouts were brewed, they were meant to be kind of like a meal replacement for soldiers. Um, I'm just going to dab a little bit off the trail here and tell you something really cool. Um, if you were to drink this, if it was a stout, I'm not sure I can compare this to a, a, a porter, but if this was a stout... You're looking at 350 calories here. Um, your standard bottle is about 100 to 150 calories. So I can only expect this porter to be somewhere between 200 and 350 calories, uh, which is quite a lot. So if you're trying to cut back on calories in your beer, um, like I should be at the moment, I recommend that you uh, stay away from stouts and porters for the meantime. Um, another thing that I was going to say, uh, I watched a television show recently, yeah, it's called Glutton for Punishment, it was on the Food Network, of course I watched it uh, off the Food Network because my, my girlfriend loves the Food Network, she saved this one for me because uh, she knows that, you know, I love beer, and this guy went on a Guinness only um, appetite for 10 days. Um, all they could drink was Guinness and water. Uh, I don't even remember if he drank water. And the only, re the only reason why I'm saying this is because by the 10th day, it was very interesting. You had almost, uh, you had 20, 30, 40, 50 people trying to convince this guy to, to eat food and to, to drink something else. And, and, and they were tempting him with his, his most favorite foods. And this guy's a chef, right? So you can only imagine the pressure that this guy was under. This guy survived 10 days on Guinness. Uh, he went to the doctor, and the doctor said that the only way that he's going to be able to make it uh, safely, or presumably safely, uh, would be to drink 10 Guinness beers a day for the 10 days that he's going to be on it. So this guy drank 10 Guinness breakfast, lunch, and dinner 
every single day for 10 days. And on the 10th day, I'm telling you, man, this guy was still alive. He, he was going through his ups and downs through the whole television show. But, uh, but honestly, uh, I couldn't believe this guy made it to the ending. Uh, it just proves you that you can survive off of Guinness alone uh, under harsh circumstances, uh, a.k.a. soldiers when they were drinking them as a meal replacement in the war. Um, one thing at the ending of the video, at the beginning of the video, this is kind of like a, a supersize me kind of take on Guinness, if, if I would say. One thing that I really liked was the, uh, the doctor took all of his vital signs at the beginning, uh, did all of this stuff, and the doctor's like, you're crazy, uh, I wouldn't do this, uh, you're going to die, blah, 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 blah. So the guy went to the 10th day, went into the doctor's office. What does the doctor say to him? Well, the doctor was a little bit of a smart ass, and he looked at him right away, and he told him how dehydrated he looked. And you could literally tell, he did, he did look dehydrated, but the doctor was trying to prove himself right by kind of explaining things before he had the vital signs. The doctor did the vital signs, and you know what they found? He was the exact same as he was before the ten beers that he, uh, the ten days of Guinness uh, binging that he did. So it has been proven that Guinness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel terrible because I'm talking about this, uh, and I'm drinking a Fuller's Porter beer. But uh, yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> Very good beer. I would buy it again. I definitely would. I'm trying to catch the magic there. If you, if you drink it real uh, straight and then you put it down, you get to see a wonderful, magical, glorious uh, example of magic within the beer. Um, it really does look gorgeous. I love beer. So that's that, and that's that. All right, people. Thanks for joining me on that burp. Uh, all right, so how am I going to rate this beast? I'm at 12.30 here. Um, all right, I'm going to give this a 3.7 out of 5. Uh, very good for a porter. Very good for a porter. Probably one of the best porters I've ever had. Um, and that's that's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. So thanks for uh, joining me on another one of Chris's beer reviews. Thanks for putting up from, with my straight, unedited beer review footage. And join me next time on another one of Chris's exciting beer reviews. <laughs> Don't drink and drive, but drink responsibly. Cheers. <laughs>